Praise the Lord, precious saints, and welcome to another daily prophetic utterance to start your day. The Lord is saying today, My child, it grieves me still that many of my children are taking the bait of Satan at this time. Each time he throws a fence towards them. Yes, he will use what people say and do to get your back up. He will use a social media post to stir up hatred. He will use anything you see on your television to stir up your emotions to bring division. Therefore, be alert and discerning for all that you see is not all truth. And many are being played at this time with half-truths, my child. Yes, did I not warn you that a sign of my return would be that people would be easily offended and turn on each other? Yes, the enemy is using many schemes and tactics to stir up unrest and insecurity within society. For he knows if he can divide a church, he has stopped people praying. But despite his best efforts to bring hatred and division within the hearts of man, I am about to do something. I am about to change the game plan. Yes, my child, when I died on the cross, I did not die for some or a selected few, but all, my child. Therefore, all people are important to me, and so should they be. For when you love me, you will also love one another. I created you unique in my image, so that your true identity can only be found in me and not in one race, not in one culture, not in your financial status, not in your relationship status, and not within your career, my child, but only in me. Therefore, find your true identity in me once more and know that you were worth dying for. So despite what is happening and manifesting around the world today in the natural, my child, yes, with hatred and unrest, I am still in control. For the devil is on a leash, and as I am sovereign over the devil, he will only do what is permitted. If you will just allow me to occupy every room of your heart that has been blocked to me, then I will turn each area of stone within your heart to flesh today. So do not give any place for the devil any longer, but trust that I have all things under control. See, when the devil can't take you out, he will try to wear you out by sending distractions. As the devil shouts with joy when you stop praying, my child, for he is extremely fearful of you when you persist in prayer. This is why he is always working to promote prayerlessness within your life, my child. Yes, he will send distractions your way. He will make you feel too ill to pray. He will get someone to call you. He will make you angry and upset before you even start to pray. He will make you feel hungry. He will put worldly entertainment in front of you to distract you and many other things, my child, to stop you seeking my face because he knows that the prayer of faith moves mountains and that his kingdom is a threat when you pray for his strongholds to start tumbling down. Therefore, continue to push forth in prayer and pray until something happens. Don't just quit when you don't see something happening in the natural or in your timing, but be persistent in prayer, my child, for in asking you shall receive, just like the widow that kept pesting the judge until her case was heard. Yes, he gave in and listened to her requests. And how much more when you come before me, when you intercede before my father, will he not give you a good thing? Yes, my child, the devil will use many things to take you off the course that I have for you. Yes, the devil smiles when believers shun fellowship. Yes, with other believers because he knows that there is power in the agreement of prayer. 
The devil laughs when you stop reading my word because he knows that people perish with lack of knowledge and direction of my spirit, my child. He uses the lust of this world to take your focus off heavenly things. Yes, lust is one of Satan's biggest tools to destroy you because many are deceived into thinking that just lusting after someone or something is harmless. For lust overtakes your soul, my child, with such potency. Yes, like a potent drug, he knows that your appetite for lust makes you restless, irritable and obsessed. He knows when you covet your neighbor's goods and the destruction it brings to those being envious and jealous. For the things of this world will never satisfy your soul, my child, but are all just vanity. So if his plan is to wear you out, then you must learn to not grow tired, because in my presence, as you wait upon me, I will renew your strength and turn that tired of the enemy's plans around. Yes, remember, I am bigger than any mountain that you may or may not be before you. Yes, I am a miracle worker, a God making the impossible possible for those that call upon my name. So whatever the enemy has meant for harm today, or whatever he is planning, I will turn it around and use for your good and for my glory, as you place that care and that fight within my hands today. Know that I am with you. Know that I am for you. Shalom. Praise the Lord, precious saints. The Bible says, according to 1 John 5, verse 14 to 15, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that what we have is what we ask for Him. Hallelujah. The Bible says also, according to Psalm 107, verse 28 onwards, it says, it reminds us, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed, and they were glad when it grew calm. And he guided them to their desired haven. See, there is power in prayer, precious saints. So at a time where there is calamity, when there is a time of unrest, when there's a time of uncertainty, it is not a time for us to get our focus on other things of the carnal nature, but on the things of God. And that's why we need to press in through prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. When we start to fast, we take the focus off ourselves and on the flesh and onto the spiritual things that we may see beyond. But I want to talk to you about praying to our Heavenly Father. See, prayer is a personal communication with our Heavenly Father and with an opportunity to seek His guidance each and every day. So how can prayer help you, you might say? You have a Heavenly Father who loves you and knows your needs. As His children, you have the opportunity to communicate with Him through prayer. He does hear and He does answer prayers. Through prayer, you can receive divine guidance, strength and blessings from Him daily. Prayer can help you draw closer to God, receive comfort in troubled times and know what is right from wrong. So how do you pray? While on earth, Jesus Christ taught that we should pray to the Father in his name, according to John 16 verse 23. Prayer should begin by addressing Heavenly Father and end with the statement, in the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. See, when praying, speaking openly and honestly with God, express gratitude and thanksgiving in and for your blessings. Acknowledge your love for Him and ask for help, protection and direction according to your needs. Prayer is not complicated, people. You can pray anytime, 
anywhere. You can pray out aloud or you can pray silently. You can pray in the spirit or you can pray with understanding. See, with perfect confidence that God will hear you when you pray, you must have that type of faith. So how will God answer your prayers. God answers prayers in his own time and according to his will. Prayers or the answers to prayers often come as feelings and thoughts given through the Holy Spirit or as acts of kindness done by others, by patience and with faith that heavenly Father knows what's best for us. Remember, He said in his word that, you know, you may ask for a scorpion and he won't give you a scorpion if you ask for prayer. He will give you bread. He will give you the right things. And that's what God wants to do. God wants to expect that you do also receive what you pray for. You should work out your solutions and present your intended decisions to God. God may give you help to answer with your prayers. He may give you divine wisdom. He may give you divine revelation on an issue. But right now, as we are currently in the seven days fasting, I want to encourage you to keep on pressing in. Keep on pressing in prayer. Maybe you've done the 63 days already. And God is saying, you know what? Another seven. Another seven when I got up to uh, Tuesday, which was day one of the seven day. I realized that the the end of the seven days, it would make 70 days. Now, 70 is very symbolic in scripture because we see that after 70 years of the Israelites being held in captive, that they were released, they were returned. And I believe that we're going to return back to what God had purposed for us to be the church as revival is about to be poured out. Despite what is happening right now around the world, let me tell you, God is still in control and he is going to still pour out his spirit, but he is going to work through those that are making themselves available. They that are praying, those that are fasting and seeking God, God, get ready. God is about to move. Oh, incredibly. But he's got to get us ready. He's got to get us prepared. Fasting, praying, removing the uh, worldly things of this world and the lust and the passion and everything. The lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes and the pride of life. God wants to clean us up in this hour. If you will just allow him to also clean you up this day. Let us pray, precious saints. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we come before your mercy seat this day. Lord, we thank you for the forgiveness of all of our sins as we repent to you right now because we know that Jesus paid by Christ. It was all paid on the cross. And we thank you for the Christ who came, your son, Jesus. Yes, help us to confess to you all of our sins, Lord. Yes, we thank you that you are a loving Father. That's right. You are a loving, gracious God. And thank you that you have offered us forgiveness and a gift of new life in you. Thank you that you have perfect love. And we thank you that your love is perfect. It never fails. And that nothing can separate us from that love. We pray that our lives will be filled and overflowing with the power of your love so that we can make a difference in this world and bring honor to you. We ask for your help in reminding us that the most important things are not what we do outwardly, but it's not based on any talent or gift, but the most significant thing we can do in this life is simply to love you and to choose to love one another. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your love that is patience and help us to show patience, Lord, for those around us. Lord, we thank you for your love that is kind. Help us to extend kindness to others. Lord, we thank you that true love is not jealous. Help us to cast aside feelings of jealousy and hatred towards any person from anywhere around the world. Lord, thank you 
that your love does not brag and is not arrogant. Help us not to live with pride or arrogance, but to choose to walk with humility and grace. Lord, thank you that your true love does not act unbecomingly. Lord, help us to extend kindness instead of rudeness towards others. Help us to lay aside the critical tones and tearing down with our words so that we can truly walk in peace. Lord, thank you that your true love does not seek its own. Lord, help us not to live selfishly, looking only unto the interests of our own interests. But Lord, help us to look at the interests of others. Lord, we thank you today that your true love is not provoked. Lord, help us not to become easily angered. Lord, thank you that your love does not take into account a wrong suffered. Lord, help us not to hold grudges, but to choose to forgive when there is difficulty. Lord, I pray, help us also. Lord, to leave the judgment into your hands because you are a rightful judge. Thank you, Lord, that your love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Lord, help us to love your words of truth. May we walk in your freedom and wisdom. Let it be what drives our lives and choices each day. Lord, thank you that your love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Thank you that your love never fails. Help us to love as you love. Fill us with your spirit so that we can choose what is best. We are weak, Lord, but you know all and what is best for us. And even when we are weak, you become strong within us. Thank you that it's not about us, but it's all about you. Thank you that you would equip us to face each day with the power of your love, for your forgiveness and your grace. Lord, we thank you that we love you, Lord, and we need you more today than ever before. Lord, thank you that you would come and touch your people from the top of their head to the soles of your feet right now. Come and touch them, Lord. Come and bring deliverance to each person that needs deliverance. Lord, come and bring peace in their hearts today that they may know that you're going to do something great within this hour. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. And the Lord has also given me a word of knowledge. There is someone that God is going to open your womb. So get ready for that. So if that is you and that you are uh, anticipating or wanting to become pregnant, I want you to place your hand upon your stomach right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you would open up wombs in the name of Jesus Christ. You would open up wombs in the name of Jesus Christ. I also pray for anybody uh, that has issues with the male or female organs right now. If you are a male or female and that you have issue within that area of your organs, I pray also as you have your hand upon your stomach for complete healing. Whatever that issue is with the male organ or the female organ, Lord, that you'll bring healing and wholeness, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I also pray for someone with scoliosis. Lord, I speak to that person with scoliosis that that spine will come back into the perfect design of God right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to that spine. It will come back into the perfect design of God right now and straight and now you will come under the obedience of Christ right now. Anybody also with any other issues with your spine that will also come back into the perfect design of God. Every disc, every area, every bone, every marrow, every nerve, everything will come back into the perfect design of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I also pray for anybody that has asthma and I want you to place your hand upon your chest right now. I speak to asthma asthma hear the word of God right now hear the word of God right now you will stand to the attention of our Lord Jesus Christ I command this spirit of infirmity of asthma to come out of them right now 
come out of them. Come out and go back to the pit of hell right now. I command you to in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of them. Go. Leave them now. Leave them now. 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 Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. I also speak to fibroids. Fibroids, you will also hear the word of God. You will come under the obedience of Christ and leave them right now. That fibroids will leave and everything will be brought back into the perfect design of God right now in the name of Jesus Christ and I also speak to anybody that has an itching issue upon your skin anywhere right now wherever that swelling is whatever that irritable situation is it will decrease now in the name of Jesus Christ I speak divine healing over their skin of each person right now that they will no longer have that irritable itching that is going on within their body in the name of Jesus Christ Lord I declare your healing upon them right now in the name of Jesus Christ and any other sickness that you have in your body right now I want you to arise and shine I just want you to stand up I want you to raise up your hands right now in the name of Jesus Christ I declare right now healing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet right now healing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you will testify of his goodness in Jesus name we pray and believe amen this is Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrow Path Ministries in Perth Western Australia, it is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And if you've liked this utterance today, we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also go to our Facebook or Instagram page. Go to our free website, repentancerevival.com. And don't forget, we're currently in the midst of seven days of prayer and fasting. Now, this was a sudden prayer and fasting call because it was a call to pray we're not going to probably have the three-day fasting in june now because we've got seven days of fasting right now i want you to continue fasting for those that can for seven days praying for peace and healing to the land of america with the racism and the un unrest and civil unrest and everything that's going on at the moment we need prayer and the best thing for us to do is to position ourselves in prayer so i've done a prayer program for that which is seven days if you've started late just start from day one from whenever you start it's fine but the program the prayer program is done get your family involved get everyone involved because god is moving in this hour hallelujah so i just want to encourage you to pray and believe that god is going to pour out his spirit let me tell you revival is coming despite of what the enemy may seem to do in the natural in the spiritual revival is coming temperatures increasing let's not get our focus off what god wants us to do and keep our focus on him at all times so from my family to yours god bless you we love you we are praying for you precious saints Shalom, shalom, shalom.